there were several forces, several people who were driving forces uh, uh, behind that barbecue, and I don't want to uh, imply that any one person uh, deserves more credit than anybody else. Dozens of people uh, worked really hard to uh, to make that uh, fire that the barbecue a success, and the success that they achieved with it really was um, really was amazing. But there was one man who was involved um, with the barbecue and building the fire department uh, who was a colorful and determined man, and uh, that man was M.G. Roseman. Uh, M.G. was what the psychologist and sociologist would call today uh, an alpha male. <clears throat> he was a, a community leader, and uh, people respected him, and uh, they looked to him for direction and approval. Uh, every small town uh, needs uh, somebody like M.G. Most small towns probably don't have room for too many more like him, uh, but he certainly was um, a prominent and important figure uh, in our little town when I was growing up. M.G. owned a gas station in Richfield near the major highway intersection in that part of the county, and he was also um, the uh, town constable and the chief of the volunteer fire department. And I, um, he, he, he took those jobs very seriously. I don't think he ever really uh, took a day off. And I think he considered himself personally responsible uh, for the safety of, of everybody in Richfield and Meisenhammer. <clears throat> and as I said, he, he never seemed to go off duty. He never called it quits uh, when he closed up the service station at the end of the day. And if your car broke down in that part of the county, you didn't call AAA, you called MG. <clears throat> um, or if you did something uh, really stupid, of course, now I would never do anything like this, but uh, this is just an example here. Um, if you did something really stupid, like say got your father's pickup truck uh, stuck up to the axles in the mud in a plowed field at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and you knew that your father would kill you if he found out where you had tried to drive his truck. <clears throat> you didn't call your father. Uh, you went to somebody's house and you asked to use the phone and you called MG. And he'd be there in a few minutes uh, and pull you out of the mud. And even though you knew that MG would um, almost certainly see your father somewhere in the next few days, uh, you knew that he would never tell uh, your dad what his idiot teenage son had, had tried to do with his pickup truck. He'd pull your uh, dad's truck to solid ground, and he probably wouldn't even charge you because he knew you didn't have any money anyway. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, he wouldn't charge you, but he would give you kind of a, kind of this cheery warning. Um, now, M.G. was a big man. He was a little over six feet tall and burly with uh, wiry dark hair. Usually had a cigar sticking out of the corner of his mouth. Um, and, he, and when he had just helped you out of uh, some stupid mistake and you knew your secret was safe with him, he'd come up to you and he'd stand a couple of feet away sort of right in your face and he'd grin and, and kind of look you in the eye and wink and he would say through that grin don't do this again and even though he was grinning at you when when he said it you sort of picked up on something primal here um something instinctive about this kind of cheery warning um, this is one of the tribes alpha males laying down a boundary for one of the, uh, for a younger male. Don't do this again. And you did not do it again. You might have to call MG again to uh, help you out of a different mess, but you did not call him to help you after he clearly warned you not to do something a second time. Now MG helped a lot of um, young stupid males 
out of embarrassing situations and he kept her secrets. I mean, you know, I've sort of heard that. I've sort of heard that. That's just a rumor, you know. Yeah, we get an amen. 